In this series, we are exploring the role of the women of the Ahl al-Bayt after Ashura. How did they continue to lead the campaign against injustice and tyranny and how they suffered throughout this tragedy and what lessons we can learn from their struggle. In the previous episode, we explored the role of Lady Rabab and her daughter Sukaina after the Battle of Karbala. In this episode, we look at the role of Lady Fidda, one of the greatest servants to have served the Ahl al-Bayt and who was also present at Karbala and its aftermath. Lady Fidda was arguably the oldest lady in Imam Hussein's camp. Lady Fidda, commonly pronounced as Fizza in Farsi and Urdu, was the servant of Lady Fatima Zahra, daughter of the Holy Prophet. She was from Ethiopia, but the year of her birth is unknown. Some historians say that she lived for 120 years. It is said that her original name was Maimuna, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself named her Fidda. It is reported that after the Battle of Khaybar, Prophet Muhammad gifted Lady Fidda to Lady Fatima for help with her household work. Lady Fidda therefore became one of the most trusted and admired servants for the Holy Prophet and Lady Fatima. Historians write that Lady Fatima never considered or treated Lady Fidda as a servant. In fact, one day the Holy Prophet had come to visit Lady Fatima and saw her grinding wheat while carrying one of her sons. The Holy Prophet asked her to give this work to Lady Fidda. And Lady Fatima responded that it was not Lady Fidda's turn to work that day. So even though Lady Fidda was a servant of Lady Fatima, she was still treated equally and justly and hence shared the workload with Lady Fatima. It is narrated also that Lady Fidda learnt and remembered the Holy Quran and that she often used to communicate and answer people by giving the relevant Quranic verse. It is narrated that the Holy Prophet one day asked Lady Fidda for her reason of happiness. She responded that whenever she hears Lady Fatima call her sister, and Imam Hassan and Hussein and Lady Zainab call her mother, she couldn't be more happier. After the death of Lady Fatima, Lady Fidda continued her service for the family of the Prophet and came to the service of Lady Zainab. लेकिन जनाबे सीधा की जब शहादत हो जाती है तो उसके बाद जनाबे फिज़ा मुंतकिल हो गई जनाबे हजरते जनाबे कुबरा के यहाँ और लेकिन उसी ज़माने में आपने फैसला किया कि मुस्तकिल नहीं उसमें वालफ़ाज भी लिखे हैं किताब के हवाले से कि जनाबे जनाबे कुबरा के पास भी होती थी और ख़िदमत के लिए जनाब सरकार इमाम हसन मुशतबा अमी सातम के लिए घर में जाहिर जैब सब शादी शुदा हो गए सब अपने अपने अलग अलग घरों में लेकिन जनाब जनाब फिज़ा ने अपने को इन घरों में तकसीम कर दिया इन इस घर की खिदमत को आपने छोड़ा नहीं है तीनों घर में जो है आप खिदमत कर रही थी जनाब जनाब कुबरा के घर में भी उनके साथ में ज़्यादातर उन्हीं के साथ में रही हैं लेकिन कभी कभी इमाम हसन मुशतबा सलाम और सरकारी सैदुलशहदा हजरत इमाम हसैन सलाम के घर में भी खदमत गुजा खदमत करती रही हैं शी ओसो अकम्पनीड इमाम हुसैन एंड ट्रैवल्ड विद हिम टू खरबला उसके बाद जब जनाब सरकार सैदुलशहदा ने मदीना छोड़ने का आ, कस्त कर लिया अदा कर लिया और उसके साथ में जनाब जानब कुबरान भी कि मैं भी भाई को नहीं छोड़ सकती साथ में चलेंगे तो जनाब फिज़ा ने भी तय किया कि मैं भी अकेली मदीने में नहीं रह सकती हूँ बल्कि मुझे भी साथ में जाना है यानी सरकारी से तो शहदा सरा तो सलाम ने दावत नहीं दी थी लेकिन चूँकि इस घर की वो खिदमत गुजार थी खदमत करती थी इसलिए जब ये काफिला चलने लगा है तो जनाब हज़रत फिज़ा ने भी तय किया कि मैं भी साथ में 
چلوں گی اور جناب فضا کا کردار اس میں بے انتہا گئیں اور نہ جانے کتنے مواقع پر ان کا تذکرہ ملتا ہے ذکر ملتا ہے On the day of Ashura, she was also one of the captives. She was very old at that time, but she still managed to try and take care of the children and the women of the caravan. Night of Ashura, she cried. She said, I wouldn't know that situation. If I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that. Because I cannot see the Hussein in this situation and you as well. When Imam Hussein and his companions were martyred and it was announced that the corpses of the martyrs would be disrespected, historians narrate that it was Lady Fidda who came to Lady Zainab with this news. Asre Ashur ko ye elan ho gaya ki janab Imam Hussein ke sar ko paam unke janaze ko paamal kiya jayega to us lamhe bhi janab Fidda ne aakar kaha tha bibi main bahut buri khabar sun kar ke aayi جناب جناب ظاہر جناب امام حسین کی بہن ہے فضا کیا بری یا بڑی خبر ہو سکتی ہے کیا میرے بھائی کی شہادت سے بڑی خبر ہو سکتی ہے زینب نے برداشت کر لیا ہے علی اکبر کی شہادت سے بڑی خبر ہو سکتی ہے زینب نے برداشت کر لیا ہے اس سے بڑی یا بری خبر کیا ہو سکتی ہے جناب فضا تھی تو ان کا نہیں بیوی آپ اپنے سینے کو سنبھالیں تو میں اپنے کلیجے کو سنبھالیں تو میں بتاؤں بتا دو کہو زینب سب کچھ برداشت کر چکی بات کر برداشت کر لے گی تب کہا میں نے ابھی سننے سن میرے کانوں میں آواز ہیں کہ گھوڑوں کی نان بندی کی جا رہی ہے اور حسین کے جنادے کو پامال کیا جائے گا یہ جانے کیسے اور کس طریقے سے جناب زینب ایک دم سے بےچون ہو کر کھڑی ہو گئے اور سیدھے جو ہے آپ میدان کی طرف جاتی ہیں ایٹ دا کورٹ آف یزید لیڈی فدا ریپریمانڈیڈ یزید سروینٹس اینڈ ہر وائس واز سو اتھارٹیو دیٹ ایٹ انفلوئنس یزید سروینٹس ٹو ریفیوزنگ ٹو ہیومیلیٹ ہر وین شی سو دس لیڈی فدا دین سیڈ او یو پور سلیوز یو کڈ کیئر فار ا سروینٹ بٹ ناٹ ہر ماسٹر دی لیڈی زینب ڈونٹ یو نو ہو زینب از شی از دی گرینڈ ڈاٹر آف رسول اللہ She intervened and raised her voice at Yazid for disrespecting Lady Zainab. Court of Ibn Ziyad, when she, he called the name of Zainab, she was, again she, she uh, bent ahead and she said, he went forward and she said, I am, uh, you talk with me, you, you are not had ability to talk with her. She reminded Yazid and his advisors to whom they were speaking to and humiliating. When uh, Ibn Ziyad in Kufa insulted Bibi Zainab Salatu Alaiha, she raised her voice and stood in front of Bibi Zainab Salatu Alaiha and defended her and uh, challenged uh, Ibn Ziyad and all the Africans who were present there. They came in defense of uh, Bibi Fizza Salatu Alaiha and uh, then this itself led into another incident Uh, which showed that uh, which allowed Bibi Zainab Salatullah to say that we have reached to a time that uh, Bibi Fizza has more supporters than Ahlul Bayt Salatullah people have become blind to the fact that we are the Uh, descendants of Prophet Muhammad and family of Prophet Muhammad and we are being treated as traitors and uh, Bibi Fizza has stronger supporters in, his, uh, in her African people who were willing to defend Bibi Fizza in opposition to Ibn Ziyad. It is said that she didn't live long after Karbala آپ کی وفات یعنی جناب فضا کی وفات جو ہے جناب زینب کبرا صلی اللہ علیہ کی شہادت کے کچھ عرصے کے بعد ہوئی اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ آپ سوچیں کہ جناب خاتون جنت کی حیات میں آئی ہیں جب آئی ہوں گے تو اچھی خاصی آپ کی عمر بھی ہوگی جب آئی ہیں تو اور آپ نے گویا کہ عمر تو لا نہیں پائی ہے کہ جناب زینب کبرا صلی اللہ علیہ کے بعد آپ کے انتقال ہوا ہے 
It is true to say that Lady Fidda served members of the Ahl al-Bayt, considering them as friends of Allah. Therefore, she dedicated her life for them. One such lady that she helped bring up and look after was Lady Ummi Kulthum. She was also present at Karbala. Lady Ummi Kulthum was the younger daughter of Imam Ali. She is known as Zainab al-Sughara, Sughara meaning the smaller. It is important to note here that the word Umm in Arabic means mother. It is a kunniya. The eldest child name joins the mother's name, for example, Lady Umm Farwa, Lady Umm Salma, to denote identity of a mother. But in some cases, it is not necessarily that case. Sometimes the kunniya is used to define characteristics of a person, both negative and positive. For example, Abu Lahab, father of flames, or Abu Jahal, father of ignorance, are two examples who are condemned through their names. Um Kulthum is literally translated as the mother of everything, or mother of charming, or mother of beautiful. The name Kulthum means silk on the top of a flag. There is a general consensus that Lady Umm Kulthum never bore a daughter whose name was Kulthum. This name was given because of her pious and beautiful nature. It is said that this title was given to her by the Holy Prophet. Lady Umm Kulthum's birth year is not exactly established and it is said that she was born in between 6th and 9th Hijri. Some say she was born in 6th Hijri and trace her birth route from this narration mentioned in Maktalil Masumin, that she was born after Zainab al-Kubra just as Zainab was born after al Hussein. Imam Hussein was born in 4th Hijri and Lady Zainab in the 5th Hijri. So from this narration, Lady Umm Kulthum was born in 6th Hijri, but several scholars also believe that she was born on the 18th of Rabi'ul Awwal in the 7th Hijri. When Lady Fatima was martyred in 11th Hijri, Lady Umm Kulthum was very young. But the Lady of Light Fatima al-Zahra was well aware about the future and before her death, Lady Fatima said to Umm Kulthum, my will to you is to participate with your father and brothers to defend Islam. Melt yourself to your brother Hussein. His turn will come. He will be the person to carry the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will be participating with him at that time. You have to share with him everything that will befall his path. Be prepared to face even captivity on his path. You have to be for your brothers, care for them, and be a mother for them. After her mother, Lady Zainab took care of her. It is said that Lady Umm Kulthum was really attached to Lady Zainab as she followed her sister's steps in almost every phase of life. After the departure of her mother, she was a great support for her father, Imam Ali. It is said that Lady Umm Kulthum played a highly supportive role in the Battle of Jamal that was fought between Imam Ali and Aisha bint Abu Bakr. There are disputed accounts over her marriage with the second caliph. Sayyid Ali al-Milani, he has a whole book and Sayyid, uh, before him Nasir al-Mil Nasir, Sayyid Nasir Hussain Musavi from Lucknow, from India. He has a book, Ifhamul A'da'i wal Khusum fi Raddi Aqdum wa Kulthum. He has a two volume book in Arabic to uh, reject the, uh, refute the idea that uh, um, Umm Kulthum was married to Umar ibn Khattab, you know, the second uh, caliph. Uh, number two, Sahih Hain, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim do not mention any accounts that Umm Kulthum was married to uh, Umar ibn Khattab. So there are no accounts along those lines. Some scholars argue that if their marriage took place in 17th Hijri, as it is claimed by some scholars, based on this, Lady Umm Kulthum would have been eight years old which would have been very young for marriage. Secondly, the more important question is, why did the second caliph ask for the younger daughter when the elder daughter, Lady Zainab, was unmarried? 
Similarly, why would Imam Ali be more concerned about the marriage of his younger daughter instead of the elder? These questions are very basic, yet point towards the assertion of fabricated traditions related to the marriage of Lady Umm Kulthum and the second caliph. In addition, the second caliph married several ladies who had the titles of Umm Kulthum, such as Umm Kulthum Jamila bint Asim, Umm Kulthum bint Uqba, and Umm Kulthum bint Rahab. So there are high chances that Lady Umm Kulthum, daughter of Imam Ali, has been mixed up with other ladies having the same kunniya. Leading scholars Sheikh Mufid and Allama Majlisi have rejected this historical notion of marriage between Lady Umm Kulthum and the second caliph. In addition, books like Sahih Bukhari and Muslim do not mention this event at all. So the basis of this event is weak and does not have credible evidence. Many scholars agreed that her father, Imam Ali, selected On bin Jafar at Tayyar ibn Abu Talib as her husband. So Abdullah ibn Jafar at Tayyar was married to Zainab Kubra, his younger brother On. Ibn Jafar Tiyar was married to Umm Kulthum. So she was married to the, so the two sisters, Zainab and Umm Kulthum, were married to the two brothers, their cousins, first cousins. What is clear and agreed was her presence in Karbala during the battle. Well, yes, many people, uh, some people may have denied her, but she is uh, not denied by majority. Majority of the people accept that she existed, number one. Number two, she was in Karbala and she many times has said poetry and she has given sermons in, in uh, Kufa on her return to Medina, so her name has been mentioned. Historians write that on the day of Ashura, her son Qasim bin Aun was one of Imam Hussein's soldiers and was martyred along with his cousins and uncles. She was witnessing the battle, witnessing her brother Imam Hussein being surrounded by bloodthirsty soldiers. Then when she saw Imam Hussein fall from his horse, she expressed her pain. My calamity is so great, I cannot even explain it through poetry. I cannot begin to comprehend it. Through my knowledge and thoughts, you approached the event and it shocked me. I used to honour every neighbour, but today, look at him laid down on the earth. There is no welcome for his arrival except for seeking revenge for the sake of Hussein. It is not the fault of Al Jawad that Allah has made him miss his horse, but he has also protected him from harm. O oh my soul, be patient in this world and its trials. This is Hussein going to the Lord of the heavens. When the other ladies listened to these words of Lady Umm Kulthum, they came out from the camps and saw the horse soaked with Imam Hussein's blood. Lady Umm Kulthum cried out aloud, O oh Muhammad, O oh Father, O oh Ali, O oh Jafar, O oh Hamza, here is Hussein in the open plain of Karbala. When Lady Umm Kulthum saw Imam Hussein's mutilated body, she said, O oh, Apostle of Allah, come and see how the body of your son is discarded upon the plains without even the ceremonial washing. The blowing sands have placed a shroud upon him while the flowing blood from his jugular veins has washed him. O oh, Rasulullah, see how your daughters are humiliated and taken as captives while the heads of the shining moons are raised on the ends of spears. There is no advocate protecting them and the heads of his children are raised upon spears shining like the moons. It is reported that she was very upset and disturbed seeing people leaving Imam Hussein up until the 9th of Muharram. According to one tradition, it is said that on the eve of Ashura, Imam Hussein called Lady Zainab and Lady Umm Kulthum and took a vow from both of them that they would take care of the children after him. When Yazid's forces burnt the camps of Imam Hussein after his martyrdom, the children became dispersed. Lady Umm Kulthum and Lady Zainab, amidst this chaos, rushed to find the children. Both ladies were shouting the names of the children. 
asking them to come back. Then Lady Zainab asked Lady Um Kulthum to take care of the children. Um Kulthum, look at all the, tell the women to look at their children. I want all women to look after their children and there shouldn't be anyone missing. Lady Um Kulthum was a huge support to Lady Zainab and without her it would have been difficult for Lady Zainab to lead the caravan. Imam Hussain's son, Imam Zainul Abidin, was unable to take command of the caravan of women and children after Imam Hussain's martyrdom as he was seriously ill. So therefore, Lady Zainab and Lady Um Kulthum safeguarded both the children and the women. It is said that both ladies gathered the women and the children at one place and then stood on two different positions to supervise remaining members. When captives were being taken to Kufa, people stared at the looted caravan. When Lady Um Kulthum saw this insensitivity of the people, she said, O oh people of Kufa, do you not have any sense of shame before Allah and his messenger, so you look at the ladies of the Prophet? When the caravans reached Kufa, it is said that Lady Um Kulthum gave a historic sermon. She admonished the people of Kufa and said, why did you not come to help my brother? Why did you chain the family of the Prophet? What will you answer to Rasulullah on the day of judgment? One tradition says that when the looted and poor caravan reached Kufa, some women came out with dates and food with the intention of giving charity. And upon seeing this, Lady Um Kulthum said, O oh, women of Kufa, your men killed our men. Why are you crying now? You'll see what Allah will do on the Day of Judgment. And remember this, we are the Ahlil Bayt. Charity on us is forbidden, so take your food back. Sayyid ibn Ta'us mentions that Lady Um Kulthum then said, You killed my brother. Woe be upon you. You will surely be rewarded by the fire which burns eternally. You have shed the blood whose shedding was proclaimed to be unlawful by Allah by the Qur'an and Rasulullah. May you receive tidings of the fire where tomorrow you shall dwell internally. I will weep upon my brother all through my life who was born as the best of creatures after Rasulullah. The tears will flow down my cheeks similar to the flood and rainwaters and will never dry up. Seeing the whole tragedy of Karbala is itself a big tragedy. It is beyond human strength to witness the peak of brutality and oppression which the women of Karbala had witnessed. And this pain and sense of massive loss could be felt in Lady Um Kulthum's sermons. آپ جو ہیں پلٹ کر کے مدینے آئی ہیں تو آپ نے مدینے کو یعنی شہر مدینہ کو مخاطب کر کے جو ہے جو اشعار کہیں کہ شہر اس کا مفہوم یہ ہے شہر مدینہ تمہیں یاد ہے کہ جب ہم یہاں سے چلے تھے تو ہماری گود بھری ہوئی تھی ہمارے ساتھ کون کون تھا اور کیسے کیسے لوگ تھے جب ہم یہاں سے چلے ہیں مگر اے مدینہ جب ہم پلٹ کر کے آئے ہیں اب یہ نہیں ہیں اور یہ نہیں ہیں اور یہ نہیں ہیں یعنی آپ پڑھ رہی تھیں اور یقیناً جو حادثات سے گزرا ہوا ہو اور جن کے سامنے جن میں پڑھ رہی ہیں وہ سب انہیں دیکھے ہوئے ہوں تو یقین سوچیں کہ کتنا گریا ہوا ہوگا اور کیا کیفیت رہے گی شی ایکٹڈ سملرلی ایز لیڈی زینب ایٹ مینی پلیسز شی آلسو پروٹیکٹڈ امام زین العابدین ریئلائزنگ دی امپورٹنس آف این امام When Lady Um Kulthum saw that the fourth Imam was struggling to stand up properly due to his severe illness, she said, Confine him so that the world may not run out of the progeny of Rasulullah. She was brave, fearless and ferocious in her speech. Bibi Zainab and Um Kulthum are also mentioned. Uh, their names come up quite often as the defenders of Ahl Bayt they used to give very strong sermons and khutbas which used to remind people of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib the way he used to talk people started to think Imam Ali himself because uh, Imam Ali was known as a very eloquent speaker and uh, Bibi Zainab they had this eloquency in them 
they were able to express in the manner Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib used to express his views and opinion. At many places, she contended the people of Gufa and tried to make them feel guilty over their deceit towards her brother, Imam Hussein. Liberation from Yazid's captivity was more emotional and full of grief. Pain and sufferings were clearly visible in the sermons of the Ahlul Bayt in post-prison life. It is said when captives returned to Medina, Lady Umm Kulthum recited these words. O city of our grandfather, accept us not, for with sighs and griefs we come. We left you surrounded by kith and kin and returned with neither sons nor men. When she returned to Medina, she dedicated her life to spreading the news of what happened at the tragedy of Karbala. She used to recite poetry and explained how the son of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Imam Hussein, was brutally slaughtered, how the family of the Holy Prophet was later captured, chained, tortured and humiliated. During her life in Medina, she used to hold gatherings to inform the ladies of the community about the significance of attending morning sessions and to remember Imam Hussein and explain the suffering of Imam Hussein and his companions. Her continuous campaign to spread the message of Karbala was becoming unacceptable to the Umayyad leaders. As a result, she was put under house arrest to prevent her from unmasking Yazid and the Umayyad atrocities against the house of the Holy Prophet. Unfortunately, it is unclear when she exactly died. But many historians believe that she died after four months and ten days after her return to Medina. According to one estimate, it was 10th Rabi al 61 Hijri, when they reached Medina. It is said that Lady Umm Kulthum was buried in Jannat al baqiyah in Medina. But there is also a shrine dedicated to her memory in Bab al saghir a cemetery in Damascus. It is unfortunate that there seems to be a lack of research on her life. She played an important role throughout her life. She was a great support to her father, elder brother Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein during the Battle of Karbala. She shouldered Lady Zainab and shared the burden of pain and suffering when they were taken as captives. After returning to Medina, she mourned and organized exclusive sessions to mourn the martyrs of Karbala. Looking at her contribution, there is plenty of room to conduct research to explore her life further. Many historians agree that the struggle led by Lady Umm Kulthum is understated and underreported due to various reasons. But her sermons, even though very few, suggest that her presence in the court of Yazid was decisive and it challenged Yazid's immoral and ruthless rule. Lady Umm Kulthum and Lady Zainab are two names that stood for one ideology and principle, and that is to stand for justice and display the spiritual supremacy of the Ahl al-Bayt. Indeed, Lady Umm Kulthum, with her every act and sermons, reflect the attributes of her father, Imam Ali, which helped her throughout the Karbala tragedy. Karbala is incomplete without mentioning the great elder sister of Lady Umm Kulthum. In our last episode, we will look at the role of Lady Zainab. <laughs>